how to solo over the extremely common one to four chord change across the fretboard in all five caged pentatonic positions. Key of E major, we're gonna have. All right, finding that chord change in the open position there. Then we're gonna have the D shaped position. Then we're gonna have the C-shaped position. Targeting the major third and the root note of that incoming four chord, A major. And then we're gonna go to the A-shaped position. Then on to the G-shaped position. Finally, back home to the E shape position. All right, let's break that down. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Swift Lessons for another blues rock solo and tutorial. In today's session, I'm going to be teaching you how to solo over top of one of the most common chord changes in all of popular music the one to four change. So, we're going to be working in the key of E today. So, that's going to give us the chords. Let's consult our major scale. E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. All right, so the first and fourth notes of that scale are E and A. That gives us the chords. E major, A major. Okay, so the goal for today's lesson is to learn how to transition between those two chords melodically, and I'm going to be teaching you how to do it in all five pentatonic boxes. Before we get started, I want to remind you, you can head over to swiftguitar.com slash giveaways. Every month, I'm giving away a great instrument. This month, it's going to be this beautiful uh, Squire 70s style classic vibe Stratocaster. Now, let's get started. Okay, a close look at the fretboard, getting started learning how to play over top of a 1 to 4 change, first in the open position. Let's get started by reviewing the minor pentatonic scale, which is going to give us a safety net and a bunch of notes that we can use to solo over top of these chords. So, it looks and sounds like this. Zero, three, zero, two, zero, two, zero, two, zero, three, zero, three. Then, if we want to add a little major flavor to that, we can start adding in the major third in that key, and also the flat at fifth, or the blue note. Okay, so that looks like this. Okay, so that right there is going to give me a ton of notes that I can use to play over top of these changes. But it's not necessarily going to be enough to imply the common four chord, A major. For that, I need to use the major third and the root note of that chord. So if I look at my A chord, the major third is C sharp, and the root note is A. I can find those two notes right here, C sharp on the A string fourth fret, and the A note here on the second fret G. All right, I can work those two notes into my lines. Here's something that I've prepared ahead of time for you. One more time at full speed. All right, breaking that down, part number one, bending the G string up a half step, and then playing open B, open E. Next, we're back to the G string. We're gonna play. Two, zero, two, landed on the D string second fret. All right, then we're gonna use the major third, hammer on, back to the root, then open D. Working that into the lick, we have. All right, then finally, we're gonna play. That was two zero, two on the A string, and then sliding up to the fourth fret A string, and then resolving on the root note of the A chord, A, second fret of the G string. I can also work C into that lick. 
kind of a country roll. All right, you put all that together and we have... <laughs> Okay, so that right there, a great transition lick taking you from the one to the four, one measure of E going into the A major chord. Okay, now going up the fretboard to our next caged position, we have D shape position. Right here, I have an E major chord rooted off of the D string, played as a D shape. And overlap in that chord, we have another position of the minor pentatonic scale. So I just played 0, 3, 5, 2, 5, 2, 5, 2, 4, 3, 5, 3, 5. And of course we can dress that up. With the flat at fifth and the major third for more flavor. Okay, now let's get a lick down in this position. Looks and sounds like this. E going to A. Okay, so that started off with a walk up, sliding up to the fifth fret of the B string, third fret high E, then a slide, five going up to six, back to five, and then down to three. So far you have. All right, next we're gonna start this pattern, going down three, and then back up one. Okay, without the hammer-ons. And then we're gonna end with the second fret of the B string, and then fifth fret high E. All right, the major third and root note of the A chord, just like we said before. Okay, you put all that together, it's gonna sound like this with the hammers, real slow. way to imply that E to A chain. Okay, now moving into the next caged position, we have the E chord played as a C shape. And surrounding that chord shape, we have the minor pentatonic scale. Okay, so the E chord in C position and the minor pentatonic scale in C shape position. And then right there in that pocket, we have the A major chord. It's major third and it's root note. Sixth fret G, fifth fret of the high E string. So we're gonna be tying those two notes into our lick uh, to transition to the four chord. Okay, so the lick here is gonna look and sound like this. With a count, one and two and a three and a four and a... All right, then right on beat number one of the next measure, we transition into the four chord A. Okay, breaking that up into some small sections. Section one. So we're just alternating back and forth between 7th fret A string and 5th fret of the D string. Then section 2. Alright, now I'm on 7th fret of the D string and go into the 4th fret of the G string. Then we're going to play 4, 7, 4 on the G string. Put those two parts together and we have. And then next all we have to do is transition to the four chord A. It's major third and it's root note just like before. That's the sixth fret of the G string, fifth fret high E. Here you can finish off with some hybrid picking for a slightly different texture. Okay, so now we have some licks to practice. The open position. We have what you might recognize as the upper extension. But it's actually the D-shaped position. And we have the 
C shape position. Great lick right here. All right, next we're going to the A shape position of the E chord. All right, we have the overlap and pentatonic scale. And of course I have tabs for all of this at patreon.com slash swiftlessons to help you with your study. Okay, from that scale, we have this great lick that's descending down and then resolving on the four chord A. And real slow. Once again, picturing my A major chord. I'm finding its major third and its root note right there, C sharp and A. Breaking that lick up into a couple of parts, part one and part two. And then finally, the transition. Okay, so we're hammering. Uh, seven up to nine on the G string. Going back to seven, nine on the D. Then hammer pull, utilizing that flatted fifth. And then to the 10th fret of the A string. So far you have. All right, then part two of the lick. One more time. All right, so that was D string seven, 10, seven, 10, seven. And then finally 10 on the low E string. Alright, you put that together we have. Trying my best to keep my pick alternating. Put that together with part one. And then finally a slide up to the ninth fret low E string. And then some heavy vibrato on the seventh fret of the D string. Put that together and we have a great lick in the A-shaped position, taking us from E to A. Okay, now moving on to the next position we have up the fretboard, the G-shaped position. Here I'm taking my G chord, transposing it to the key of E, and barring. And overlapping with that chord shape, we have the minor pentatonic scale in this position. All right, that's 10, 12, 10, 12, 9, 12, 9, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12. All right, this is a really fun position to jam in. Now we're gonna do a very cool kind of double stop technique here. The lick looks and sounds like this. One more time. Breaking that up into a couple parts. Part number one. One more time. All right, so double stop slide, 12 and 12 on the B and high E. Next, a slide back to the 10th fret B string. 12 on the G. And then back to the B string. Next, on the G string and the D string, we're gonna have that back three up one. All right, you put that together and we have. All right, then we're gonna slide up to the major third. I'm looking at a A major chord played as a C shape. I can find the major third here and the root note here. All right, so that's 11th fret D and 10th fret B. Put that together and we've got. Okay, so let's stop and practice lick number one. Lick number two. Number three. Lick number four. And lick 
number five. All right, now, one more position to learn. We're gonna do the octave of where we started. So, the main position of the minor pentatonic scale. We can dress it up with the flat at fifth and the major third. Right there is that major note. certainly the most powerful of our five minor pentatonic caged boxes. Okay, so the lick that we have here is going to look and sound like this. And of course, once again, we found C sharp and A. That lick real slow. Let's break that up into a couple parts. Part number one. All right, the G string being bent up. Then 12, 12 being high E. Very common way of starting a blues lick. Next, a pull off, uh, 15 down to 12. All right, that gets us to step two of this lick. All right, so I'm going up from 14 to 15, back with a pull off, 14 down to 12. Then 12 on the D. Next, minor third to major third. And then we're going to scale down the root note down to the dominant seven. So 14 down to 12. Put parts one and two together, should sound like this. Sometimes when you're putting two parts together, there'll be a slight kind of hesitation between the two sections. All right, it just takes time to build the muscle memory and iron what we call impulses out of our playing. So that way it's one fluid part. And then finally we're going to resolve to the four chord, A major. Put that lick together and we got. All right, now we can play up the fretboard and transition between the one and the four, essentially conquering the most common chord change that we have in popular music. Okay, very good everybody. You've now learned five positions of the minor pentatonic scale. You've learned some chord shapes that overlap and you've learned six very cool uh, classic blues licks that you can use whenever you need the transition between one and four. Now let's practice. I'm gonna hold down the progression E to A, two measures of each chord. A one, two, three, four, and E. To the A. Thank you. 
basically done today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and that this concept of targeting the chord tones is going to allow you to play with a little bit more purpose and to construct licks that are tailor fitted to the chords you're jamming over top of. That's really the name of the game. It's so important for us to be thinking about the chords and to also be thinking about constructing licks in a way that allows the listener to sense the chord changes even if the backing track was completely removed. That's how you know you're really effectively implying the chord changes. As always, I have a full PDF study guide with printable tabs at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. If you enjoyed this lesson, then I invite you to support me there. And until next time, this is Rob coming at you from Summers Point, New Jersey, saying happy picking.